Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and I'm recording here from Sydney, Australia and it is Thursday the 16th of March. So in today's video I don't have any new finished objects but I do have um, a faux from the vault, uh, two actually, two of the same pattern. Um, I have one new cast on, I have some progress on my whips and just a bit of chatter about my week. Alright, so I'll just get into it. Uh, my um, new cast on is another ranunculus. This is my second version of the pattern and that's all I've got so far. I just started it this morning and I chose to do the narrow neckline and that involves a provisional crochet provisional cast on and then a tubular cast on which is um, like a one by one rib and it's quite stretchy and I think the reason behind that is that sorry that was my dog <laughs> I am home alone except for the dog and so he's decided he has to say something uh, so anyway back to where I was so because it's a narrow neckline I think the concept is to have a really stretchy cast on because um, you're only casting on 60 stitches yeah, so, and I did a, a like a little tutorial video on that. Um, it's on six mil needles, so it should go really quickly. I'm using Julie Asselin Anatolia in the colorway Clementine. It's a mohair silk blend in this really beautiful, like bright, vivid orange. I don't have much in my wardrobe in this color, so I'm quite looking forward to having that, um, that in my wardrobe. All right, so I've just done the custom. I'm about to start the short rows there. I have to be a little bit careful, I'll talk a bit more about this later, but I have to be a little bit careful with my hands when I knit too much on either a really large or a really small needle. And just in general, I need to vary it up a little bit, even as I was doing this. Um, and of course, the twisted rib can be a little bit um, difficult on the hands as well. Um, I can just end up with sort of a bit of cramping and hand pain. So, yep, but I'm happy with that. And I guess that's one of the reasons why it's good for me to have a few different whips on the needles that are in different sizes because then I'm less likely to have, um, you know, too much hand pain from, you know, working on one particular size needle. So that's Ranunculus, and I'm, I'm excited to be working on that one. Um, my second um, cast or second whip is the um, Fingering Weight Gusset Heel Socks by Wendy Johnson. I have finally woven in the ends on that little one. And um, because I only had a 50 gram ball of this, this is Socks Yeah by Coops Knit in the colorway Ruby. And I'm just about to, where am I, 60? I've got about three more rows and then I can start the heel. So given it's such a short sock, there's not a lot to go there. But I worked on this on last Thursday night, so a week ago. And I worked on it for about like a solid two hours. And you know, I was watching TV with my husband in the evening. And at the end of it, I didn't really think about it at the time, but afterwards, like my hand, my left hand was really aching and it even woke me up during the night. Um, and I thought, I've got to be careful there. There's really, you know, um, I just can't knit too much, especially socks actually, really large needles or socks on really small needles, because obviously with socks, when you're knitting on really small needles, the, the, the tension's really, De um, the fabric's really dense and I knit with quite a tight tension so yeah so I just I haven't knit on it since Thursday night because I was like I'm just not going to touch that for a little bit but you know a little bit here or there this is why socks are really good playground knitting because playground duty lasts for about 20 minutes and so I'm not working on them for too long and one period of time so I might now that I feel like my hands settled down a little bit I might go back to that being my playground knitting just so I can get that um, finished. That's all I've got left. But I know that that's just, that was 23 grams and it was a 50 gram ball. So I'll definitely be fine to um, to get those. I mean, I'm not in a rush to get them done, um, but I won't start new socks until I've got these ones finished. All right, so that's my socks that are on the needles. Um, I've got my Muscle Bra hat, um, which is by Solar Teague. I finished the, um, this one is, uh, what is it? It is Skein Yarn Uptown Sock in the Colourway Wisp. And so I, f I didn't actually finish the ball because I had more of this than I have of the, this is Hedgehog Fibres Skinny Singles in Wish. So it's Wisp and Wish. So this um, kind of really pretty blue is Wish. And I only had like 46 and a half grams of this. So I actually had to be careful not to knit too much of this one because I do want it to be, you know, just completely a two color. So it will fold 
there and then when you have if you've got this side out you've got the blue folded up or this side out you've got this one folded up um i'm a little bit nervous that i knit more than half like i that i'll have more rows of this than this and there's not much i can do about it because that's all i've got so what i might do if that happens when i'm blocking it I might even like even pin this bit out and sort of stretch this color out a little bit um and then not pull on this one too much so i might just be able to get a little bit more length in this one if I need to when I'm blocking it but we'll see when I get there there's not really much else I can do about that so hopefully it'll work out all right and that will be nice when that one's done um it's nice to be on the second color and I think that I think that'll be quite pretty um when that turns over yeah so that's um muscle bra by your soldier teague and I'm knitting that on a 3.5 mil needle no 3.25 mil needle because I ripped out about a third of the hat when I'd been knitting it on a 3. Five and I, it was a bit the fabric was a bit too open for me um okay and my last whip oh, sorry about that um my last whip is the um the ebb dress I might try that on um no nah, nah, that's right um maybe I will I'll see how I go um I finished so one two three colors and I'm on to the fourth color now and so I'm just knitting well this is this is the presentation side, but I'm knitting it, so I'm knitting it inside out. Um, but I thought I'd show you the presentation side. So <clears throat> this is the Ebb Dress by Olga Baraya Kafelian. I'm knitting it out of um, these yarns, the grey and this green and this pink and this one here. That's um, Ridgy Didge, Dingo Dye Works Ridgy Didge. Um, and the other two colors this this one here the gray and this pink is skein sisters fabulous sock in um this one's fairy dust and this one's aliens attack um yeah i'm really liking how that's coming along i think it's going to be like it's you know it's it's a kind of large striped dress it's a little bit different but um i do know that i wear my other one all the time and i really like it and i guess they're all kind of in the same sort of pastely they're all about the same value um, so yeah, I, th I think I like it. We'll see. Um, yeah, I'm happy with how that's going on. I might try it on after I take, the, I might, I'll see how I go. I might try it on, um, and show you where I'm up to with it. Um, so that's it for my whips. So yeah, so I'm on, I'm halfway through this color and then the next color will be this one. And then the last color will be that one. And then I've, I, there, it's going to be short sleeves. So there's not a lot of work to do on the sleeve. So I'm pretty happy with how that's going. Um, with this dress, I'll put a picture of it um, up here. I did a bit of knitting on it in the evening and so I wasn't really paying attention to my my knitting and I because I'm knitting it with a yarn held double, every now and then like I'll wrap the stitch and it won't only I will have actually only caught one of the two strands. And so I noticed there was there were like four of these sort of scattered throughout um, where I'd been knitting in the evening and hadn't noticed. And so I took the time because the reverse stockinette side is the presentation side. I In those four spots, I just had this strand of yarn, like a slip stitch running across and it was really obvious. And so I knew I needed to fix that. So I'll put a picture up here. Some of, some of them were only a few rows down. Some of them were like 20, 25 rows down. Um, and so I had to actually drop down and ladder and collect both um, both of the strands. One of them was like a little bit tighter than the other because obviously the yarn hadn't made its way around the needle, but it, it you know, managed to wangle it okay and with blocking it will be totally fine. But I knew I had to actually fix that. So yeah, it was, and it's not that big a deal. You just use a crochet hook, just takes time. Um, yeah, so I'm happy with how that one's coming along though. So faux from the vault, um, this is what I'm wearing here is the Soldotna crop. And it's by Caitlin Hunter. It is, it's, it's called a crop yarn because it is a crop sweater because it is very cropped. It's knit in DK weight yarn. So it goes really, really quickly, even though it's all over color work, it goes really quickly because it's DK weight. Um, so I used this sort of purpley color is the Hazel Knits Lively DK uh, in the color Alexandrite. And that was the, um, you know, the goodie bag yarn for SSK 2015. And I absolutely love this color. It's got sort of purples and um, greens in it. It's really, it's mainly purple, but it's got this sort of green 
in it as well. Uh, it's so gorgeous. I wish I could, um, you know, have ordered more of them. Um, anyway, I only had one skein of it, so I used it for this. And then the other colours, this blue, the, all the other colours are Madeline Tosh DK. Sorry, Madeline Tosh DK Twist. Um, this bright blue is Button Jar Blue. This kind of darker greeny blue is Cousteau. And then the the other colour is Antler. Um, and I, I it was, it was all, aside from the Alexandrite, that was um, a whole skein. Well, I didn't use the whole skein, but it was an, an individual skein. Um, everything else was leftovers. And yeah, I was so proud of myself because, you know, I like using my leftovers. Um, what do I like about it? Um, it's great with this, this dress is a not perfect linen dress. I'll just stand back. So it just, it's quite a nice, um, just throw over to keep your shoulders warm um you know so it is very cropped and the reason it's as cropped i could have gone a little bit longer but i completely ran out of i ran out of the antler altogether i could have used something else but yeah and i was almost out of the button jar blue anyway so yeah i really, it was really i just i enjoyed knitting the whole thing it was totally potato chippy i just you know i think i, I finished it in two weeks and probably could have done it even quicker if i didn't have other stuff um you know work and children and all that um yes yeah, so i really like like how it turned out. What I don't love is how high the neckline is. So even if I sort of pull it down, it's pretty warm here too. I'm going to take it off in a sec. Excuse me. <coughs> um, it's it's quite high, and so I'd have to have a little think about what I would do differently. How I could make that neckline sort of obviously I need a larger maybe cut out some of this and cast on a bit further down. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't. It's just a little. It does sort of creep up. Even if I pull it down, it creeps up. Um, but yeah, other than that, I really love it and I love the colours. And I made, I'm going to take it off now because it's really hot. Um, it's going to be 35 degrees here today, which is about 95 Fahrenheit. So, and it's already getting up there. I think it's, yeah, it's 86 right now. So, so yeah, this is a not perfect linen dress, which I think I bought off Etsy. I bought a couple of them. I really like them. Um, the only thing I don't like about this one, that's why wearing the Soldotna crop is really good. It's got a really large arm hole and you can see my bra there. So what I usually, if I'm going to wear this dress without a top over it, um, I'll just wear like a tank underneath it that sort of goes up a little bit higher because I don't, I don't like being able to see my bra. Um, but I'm at home and nobody but, but me and the dog. So, you know. Um, yeah, so that's that one. And as soon as I finished it, I made another one. Like I just, and then I, I bought more yarn and then didn't make. So I've got a lot of single skeins of DK weight yarn that I bought for more of these and then just got distracted and started knitting other stuff. So this is the second one that I made. And this purple color is Madeline Tosh DK Twist in the Dahlia colorway. And then I've got some Plucky Netta Primo DK. The yellow is Feather Duster. The white is, or the, is it white? Um, yeah, the white, or the other one is a One Hit Wonder. And then this color here is um, Ren and Ollie Spin DK in Artifact. So two completely different colors, like, oh, that one's inside out now, but where you can see my, you can see my floats. Um, switch it around so yeah so the blues and and grays sort of purpley grays and then I went for the sort of red purple and gold and and gray um, I wear this one more than this one I do like this one it's just not as much in my wheelhouse of color um, yeah yeah I don't do a lot of yellow but yeah anyway I like that one too um, yeah and I, I just haven't made another one afterwards. I made two very quickly about three, four years ago. Yeah, about four years ago now. And bought more yarn for more and just didn't. So, and I think probably a big part of it is actually this neckline. You know, it's just such a high neckline. I need to think what I would do to, obviously I'd need a larger cast on, but I'd then need to cut out some of the rows of the color work. So anyway, something to think about. Uh, I don't have any new purchases for the week. Um, so just upcoming plans, uh, ones that I've talked about before, the Ilha in another Ilha dress, just grab the yarn, in Life in the Life in the Long Grass Linen Merino in Chirp. I might actually even 
cast that on soon because that's um, that would be nice to get get going on that one because uh, I do know I want to make that so um, yeah I will, I will cast that one on soon uh, I'm still waiting on the mohair to come for the ingles sweater so that hasn't I think that um, I'm not sure when that's going to come that's coming to my local yarn store I'm due to work there not this weekend coming but the one after and the one after that two in a row so I'm really hoping somewhere in those two weeks the yarn will be there and I can pick it up when I go in um, I still want to make the pink and purple sorrels but I need to finish um, the ebb dress before I do that and the climb socks by Jane Richmond um, but I need to finish the other socks before I cast on another pair of socks the other thing that I am thinking that I haven't mentioned before is I've just cast on the mohair ranunculus but I noticed there's this um, you know people make ranunculus sometimes out of sort of the light airy mohairs but they also use worsted weight yarn and there's one that was knit by this lady Yvonne her revelry name I think is just Y-H-A-O and she knit a ranunculus in Barocco remix and in this sort of cream color it was really pretty and just like a short sleeve top and I made um, I made Beatnik by Nora Gorn, and I had um, and I used Barocco Remix for that, and I have just over two balls left of it. And this lady um, Yvonne, she used Barocco Remix and just a bit over two balls of Barocco Remix to make it, and it's a really cute cropped top. I'm not sure about it in the purple but um, you know otherwise I'm like what else am I going to do with this and I think I would wear it maybe it would be like a nice autumn top with jeans um, because that's a, a worsted weight yarn like a heavy worsted actually more like an Aran weight yarn it would be pretty warm so I couldn't wear it in summer but it might be a nice sort of change of seasons top with a with a pair of jeans so it's kind of weird to be talking about making another ranunculus when I already have one on the needles. But then I'm talking about making two sorrels anyway. So, and this one would be quite different. And with this yarn, I would do the wider neck and I wouldn't do the tubular cast on. I'd just do a long tail cast on and just get going. So yeah, so that's another upcoming plans as well. Um, so I haven't done any sewing this week, um, but my husband is out today and he's um, gone to Melbourne for the day. So I've got the house to myself and his office, in his office, I've got like a lot of my fabric stuff in a stash. And so I might, when I finish recording, go in and have a bit of a look for some fabric for the Brumby skirt. Cause then I can just pull everything out and make a bit of a mess. Um, and I can't do that when he's in there on work calls and everything. And I do like to do that in daylight and have a bit of time and you know pull things out. Because today's my day off. Um, I feel a lot less rushed today than I did last week because I don't have anywhere that I need to race off to, which is nice. Um, anyway, so that's the only sewing thing that I'll do today. So I'll see if I can find some yarn for the Brumby skirt. Oh, the other thing that caught my eye was um, the, this is knitting related, the town bag. I think Grandline Studios is doing some um, videos on the on making the town bag and that sort of you know piqued my interest I thought I might quite like to make one of those I'd need to get fabric and all of the you know materials for it for the straps and everything but yeah that kind of I thought um, I might like to make one of those I'll put a picture up here of the of that bag uh, okay what else so that's it for sewing um, now just a little bit about my week uh, I so I had that you know I did a bit of knitting on Thursday night and had that hand pain so I sort of eased off a little bit on the knitting just to give my hand a bit of a break so on the weekend I just did things like um, I went for a really nice bush walk I went for a local walk in the area with one of my friends and um, we kind of spent most of the time trying to find where the like where the entry point was so hopefully next week when we or not next week, but next time we go for a walk again, we'll, we'll um, be able to start in the right spot and then go for a better bushwalk. And I'll try to remember to take some nice photos because where we live is such a beautiful area. So I did that on Saturday. Um, and on Sunday, I did a job, given that I wasn't knitting so much, I did, uh, I've been meaning to clean out my pantry, which sounds really boring, but honestly, I'm so happy I did it. Because you know you just get everything off the shelves and you you know go through and clean out stuff and get rid of you know stale nuts and things and um, so I'll put a picture of what I was like the chaos in the middle of it 
and then another picture of, of it all looking beautiful. So um, yeah, I just sort of did a few more admin stuff around the house, laundry and things, seeing I couldn't knit that much. Well, it was better for me not to knit too much. And then um, Monday night, we went to see Florence and the Machine. So that was my husband and two of our daughters. And she is unbelievable. Like I'll put at the end just a, a couple of clips of the video um, I took. I didn't take much video because I just want to be there. I want to be present. Um, and she was really good. She was sort of telling people to put away their phones and just really, you know, um, interact and uh, enjoy the show being fully there, not just recording it for later. So yeah, she's amazing. She was barefoot the whole time, so much energy, such an amazing voice. I just really, but it was, we were in, next time, if I go to another concert, I have to remember, I really, especially if it's a massive concert, I just can't be down in the general admission. There were so many people and it's so crowded and hot and, you know, that was fine when I was in my 20s, um, but, you know, late 40s now, it's just a bit much for me. and. Because even where we were, I'm really short, so I couldn't see, and so I'm, I'm close, but because I'm close but can't see, I'm looking up at the screen to see her, and the screen's like up here, my neck is hurt. I sound like such an old lady. My neck hurt, for, it still hurts um, quite a few days later. So that's just in hindsight for me. It was still an amazing concert, and I really enjoyed it, but um, I think I need to be in the stands, in a, in the seat is better for me. Um, but yeah, she is un unbelievable, such beautiful, such a beautiful voice. And she's just an amazing performer. So that was Monday night, but I kind of suffered for that. Like we didn't get home till midnight and then you know, obviously work the next day. So it's just been a bit of a tiring week and lots of marking and stuff. So yeah, so it's been um, an okay week, like a good week. Like it was an amazing concert, but I've just sort of suffered a little bit for it afterwards. Uh, I don't think there's much else to tell you. Um, yeah, but today's my day off and yeah, I'm just enjoying having a little bit of a quiet, uh, quiet. I've still got a lot of, of work to do with marking and things, but I'll, you know, that can, that can wait. I'm going to do a little bit of, you know, looking for fabric and do a little bit of knitting. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I might even just, even though I just cast on ranunculus, I do this a little bit. Sometimes I'll cast on two things on the same day. Um, so I've cast on ranunculus. I might even cast on that um, another ebb dress just to sort of have it on the needles. Yeah, so anyway, that's, um, that's it for me today. Um, if you enjoyed it, if you can like and subscribe, that would be really lovely. And I'm sure there's things that I will have, that I'll forget afterwards, but I'll just put them in next week. So yeah, have a great week, everyone, and I'll see you next week. Thanks, bye. Coming towards us